You're listening to. Whoa! Hot And welcome to Books and Boba, a book club and podcast dedicated to books written by Asian and Asian American authors. Uh, my name is Marvin Yeh. And I'm Rira Yu. And we're your hosts for this mid-month check-in. What, what? It's okay. the month of May. Happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, Rira. It's our month. It's our month. And there's so many books out. Holy crap. It's like it's not a publishers... It's not a marketing ploy at all. No, I'm no. sure all the publishers said, you know what? You're Asian. We should uh, release your book in May when all the other Asian authors are releasing their it's because, books as well. It's because like, when you go into Barnes & Noble or like a big bookstore, they want to have... <laughs> oh, sorry. They, they want to have that like book tower of like, That's Asian true. They need the, um, they need the, the feature. Like the, uh, what do we call it? I used to work in retail. The end cap, I think. Or the, um, yeah, the feature... Like the featured book pile. Right? Yeah. I mean, I noticed that they do this for Black History Month as well. Like they, mm. they just have like a table full of books by black authors. <laughs> and they do this for Asian um, Pacific American Heritage Month as well. And I mean, it's good. But at the same time, I feel like I see a cluster of the same books over and over again every year. It's all the classics, right? It's yeah, the, all the, the Amy classics. Tan, the uh, the Chang Rei Li. Sometimes there are books that are not by Asian authors that are just like on the table. I mean, like the snow falling on cedars. And I'm just like, <laughs> I just want to take those books and just like move them to a different table. And I've, I mean, I'm guilty of like rearranging book <laughs> displays, but that's just me and like they my OCD. Know. I think that should be a um, Books and Boba book club like challenge is to go to your local Barnes and Noble or bookstore and fixing their Asian Pacific, a- a- fixing their APAM um, display because some books just don't belong there. Yeah. I mean, for this month, there are a lot of books. So I'm sure there is a lot more variety this year. <laughs> what is the term for like non Asian people writing Asian characters? Because it's not really whitewashing. Uh, yellow masking. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I just made that up right now. <laughs> um, well, welcome to um, the book club podcast mid month episode. Um, we, I think we're gonna try something different in the coming months. Maybe um, spreading out our content a little more. Um, like you know, in addition to our monthly book discussions, we want to give you a heads up on um, new books coming out by Asian American, by Asian and Asian American authors, and as well as um, new book news. And speaking of um, the book of the month discussion, this month's the APAM May pick for Books and Boba is The Sympathizer, the Pulitzer Prize winning book by Viet Thanh Nguyen. Um, how, how far have you got? I'm, I'm like, I've read half of the first chapter, so I'm pretty okay. far behind right now. I am only a little bit, of a, a little bit ahead of you. I've, I'm on chapter three. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, uh, Viet Thanh Nguyen has uh, a new book. Like it came out back in February. The and refugees. The right? refugees. Yeah. So it's just like it's just funny that he came out with a new book this year, yeah. and we're not reading that one. <laughs> we're reading his other book. Well, that one doesn't have a Pulitzer. So you know, until he gets his second Pulitzer, we only read a war. We- That's not true. That's not true. We- we've read some other stuff. We here. yeah, we read new books too. <laughs> No discrimination. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to finishing it. Um, I heard once it gets going, it gets going. So I kind of, you know, need to just um, find that clear night. Because I've done this before where I've started reading one of our picks. And all of a sudden, it's like 3 a.m. So. Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. As our listeners know, I like to binge my content. Yeah. Um, What else? Oh, yeah. Um, And... Stick around after the news. We have a great interview with writer Lang Liaf of um, the upcoming book, Sad Girls. Um, She joins us all the way from New Zealand to chat about her upcoming book. Um, So stick around for that. But But before all that. Yeah, let's get to the new releases for the month of May. And there is, let me, like, Rira does a printout with um, descriptions. And this is like a billion pages right here. I'm sorry, but... (laughs) <laughs> but uh, I don't know. 
Yeah. Well, why don't you start us off with the first new release? All right. The first book on our list is Always and Forever, Lara Jean by Jenny Han. And it was released on May 2nd and published by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. Uh, Always and Forever, Lara Jean completes a trilogy that began in 2014 with the New York Times bestseller, To All the Boys I've Loved Before. In this final installment, Laura Jean must decide where she goes, where she wants to go to college, and what her choice will mean for her relationship with her boyfriend Peter as she plans for her father's wedding. So Jenny Han did like a book signing um, slash reading at the last bookstore last week. Okay, and one of our fellow uh, book club members, Alice, who's mm-hmm. been a guest on the show, she went, and there was a a lot of people so <laughs> i've seen her book on the the, the ya shelves yeah, yeah yeah she writes ya her cover is so pretty by the way <laughs> um next up is the levers by lisa ko um released on may 2nd published by algonquin books um the story is about uh, one morning Damien Guo's mother polly an undocumented chinese immigrant goes to her job at a nail salon and never comes home no one can find any trace of her. Eventually, the 11-year-old Deming is adopted by a pair of well-meaning white professors in a small town in upstate New York and is renamed Daniel Wilkinson. Through alternating perspectives of both Daniel and Polly, the Leavers tells the story of how a boy comes into his own when everything he loves is taken away and how a mother learns to live with the mistakes of the past. So this is a book about undocumented Chinese immigrants and basically transracial adoptees. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there was a um, there was a really good um, feature on this book by NBC Asian America that I read. I'm also reading this book right now. Oh, and it is very good. So <laughs> I highly recommend it. Awesome. The next book on our list is Miss Burma by Charmaine Craig, released on May second, published by Grove Press. Miss Burma charts the political history of modern-day Burma through the eyes of the author's mother and grandparents. The story begins with Benny, a young Jewish Burmese man, falling in love with Kin, a woman, a woman part of a persecuted eth- ethnic minority group called Karen. The two marry, but their relationship is strained by the religious and ethnic persecution they each face through, throughout World War II and into the Karen attempt at revolution. During the ongoing civil war, Benny and Kin's el- eldest daughter, Louisa, comes of age and becomes Burma's first beauty queen, unintentionally subverting her family's war efforts by becoming a national symbol of unity. As Louisa navigates her newfound fame, she is forced to reckon with her own loyalty to the cause of the Karen people. Wow. That sounds pretty uh, pretty thrilling. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that reminds me of a story I had a friend in, um, grad school who we were eating at a Burmese restaurant and then she learned at the age of uh, like 27 that Myanmar and Burma are the same country. Yeah. I actually (laughs) don't know much about, uh, Myanmar or Mm -hmm. the political history behind it. So I, I probably would pick up this book as like an educational read, Yeah, but it sounds, it sounds very interesting Yeah, as a memoir too. Um, next up is The Little Book of Life Hacks, How to Make Your Life Happier, Healthier, and More Beautiful by Yumi Sakugawa, um, released on May 2nd, published by St. Martin's Griffin. Author, illustrator, and comic book artist Yumi Sakugawa shares a wide range of useful and unexpected tips for everything from improving your home life to creating fun and artsy DIY projects in her latest book, The Little Book of Life Hacks. The book is the book is inspired by her popular secret universe tips posted on wonderhowto.com and features Sakugawa's signature hand drawn illustrations. I've actually seen um, Yumi perform at Tuesday Night Cafe a couple times. Um, Didn't she, she perform at the last, the one yesterday, right? I didn't go to that one. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dad's in town, so I had to oh, dinner okay. with him instead. But yeah, she's. Um, I've seen her do some audiovisual stuff, and she's a really, really big supporter of the Asian American arts and activist community in Los Angeles. And so, yeah, check it out. Seems really interesting. Next book is No One Can Pronounce My Name by Rakesh Satyal, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, it was also released on May 2nd, published by Picador. I don't think he did, because no one can pronounce it, according to the title. Okay, well, at least I tried. Uh, the synopsis goes... We're so funny. Ha ha ha. Okay. We're hilarious. 
It's set in Cleveland. The novel revolves around two Indian American immigrants, Harit, a middle-aged department salesman, and Ranjana, a homemaker who has sent who has just sent her American-born son off to Princeton. Every night, Harit dons a sari to assume the identity of his dead sister to give solace to his grieving mother. Meanwhile, Ranjana, believing that her husband is cheating on her, starts secretly writing paranormal romances. When these two cross paths, they begin a strange yet necessary friendship that brings to light their own passions and fears. So it sounds like a rom-com. Yeah. Rom-com dramedy? <laughs> I, I don't know, but... Rom-dramedy. Rom-dramedy. It yes. sounds like a rom-dramedy. <laughs> if you're into that genre. Um, next up is Emperor's... I like rom-dramedy. I feel like it's you know more serious than a rom-comedy. I think it's it's like the evolved form of a yeah. romantic comedy. <laughs> um, next up is The Emperor's Riddle by Kat Zhang, um, author of The Hybrid Chronicles. This also released on May 2nd, uh, published by Aladdin Books. Mia Chen isn't looking forward to her family trip to China over the summer, but she's excited about exploring the country with her Aunt Lin. However, when Aunt Lin goes missing in Fuzhou, leaving behind an ancient treasure map, Mia quickly realizes that finding the treasure is the key to rescuing the person she knows best in the world. Sounds adventure Sounds yeah. fun. Sounds like a middle grade book. <laughs> it probably is a middle grade book. It's, a, it's probably for younger readers. Oh. I'll still read it. I'll still read it, yeah. <laughs> um, next is That Thing We Call a Heart by Shiba Karim, released on May 9th, published by Harper Teen. Pakistani-American Shabnam is facing a summer of loneliness and boredom until she meets Jamie, who scores her a job at his aunt's pie shack. Shabnam quickly finds herself in love, while her former best friend Farah, who Shabnam has begun to reconnect with, finds Jamie worrying. In her quest to figure out who she really is and what she really wants, Shabnam looks for help in an unexpected place, her family, and her father's beloved Urdu poetry. Sounds like a um, coming of age, like adventure land story, but with, you know, Pakistani Americans. I'm assume this is like totally stereotypical, but this is in the South because where else will you find a pie shack? I don't know if I'm offended by that, Marvin. <laughs> I'm from the South. But I mean, we, but yes, I do love Waffle pie. House. I love pies. Um, Cracker Barrel pie shack. It just fits. Yeah. <laughs> pie, it's, probably, it's probably meat pies too. Yeah. A meat pie shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to all the Southerners out there. Um, next up is It's Not Like It's a Secret by Misa Sugiura, um, released on May 9th, published by Harper Teen. It's Not Like It's a Secret is a coming-of-age story told through the perspective of a queer 16-year-old Japanese-American girl named Sana Kiyohara. Sana doesn't like to rock the boat and keeps many secrets such as her suspicion that her father may be having an affair and that she might have a crush on her childhood friend. When Sana's family moves to California, she begins to wonder if it's time for some honesty, especially after she falls in love with her new friend, Jamie Ramirez. But she quickly realizes that while telling the truth is easy, what comes after it is much more complicated. I like now that, like, now that we have, you know, authors or writers of color writing characters that, like, we have more believable Asian names in literature now. I mean, what were they called before? Like, I don't know. Like American names, you mean? Or? or like anime names. I feel like a lot of people like do anime, <laughs> anime sound, names? sounding names, like Kenshin Kusanagi or something. Oh, I don't God. Know. Speaking of anime, our next book is actually inspired by Feudal Japan. So that's oh. pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty anime. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not an anime book um so next book on our list is flame in the mist by renee audier released on may 16th published by gp putnam's son's books for young readers um described as a historical fantasy crossover between mulan and the throne of glass series the book takes place in feudal japan and follows mariko a clever and talented daughter of a prominent samurai resigned to an imperial marriage when her caravan is ambushed by the notorious black clan mariko disguises herself as a boy and infiltrates the clan to learn who is behind her attempted murder oh that's a pretty i can see an anime with this plot it's because it takes place in japan (laughs) and there's ninjas was it oh samurai samurai yeah black clan sounds like a ninja clan anyways 
This book actually comes out to this it, week. It, it came out already. Yeah. May 16th. Great. So now we're moving into upcoming new releases um, in the month of May. Um, next up is Dove Alight by Karen Bao. Releases on May 23rd. Published by Viking Books for Young Readers. In the third installment of the Dove Chronicles series, shy and introverted Vet Theta, Theta, this, I'm totally not pronouncing that right, has gone from being a top student to an interplanetary fugitive to the reluctant but fierce leader of a revolution. With the Earthbound on their side, she and her friends finally have a chance at toppling the evil leaders who've held the moon captive for decades. But as the death tolls rise, the cost of war weighs heavily on Vet, even as she's forced to lead her siblings and the love of her life into terrible danger. I think her name is Fate. I think so, too. Yeah. Fate Theta. We apologize for any mispronunciations. Um, I don't... There I, are probably a lot of mispronunciations in this podcast. I apologize for nothing. I apologize nothing. It's how I read it. You know how, like, how you read things is how it is. I and rarely no talk to people or rarely talk out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, anything that I read on paper, it comes out wrong. Until there mouth. is a movie or tv series on about the series about the dove chronicles proving that it's not faith theta i will pronounce it faith theta our next it's probably book- faith theta because of science fiction i realize that now yeah um anyways our next book is when dimple met rishi by sanja menon releases on and it releases on may 30th and it's published by simon pulse Menon's novel follows two Indian-American teens named Dimple and Rishi, whose parents have arranged for them to be married. Rishi is a hopeless romantic who longs for a traditional marriage like the one his parents have, whereas Dimple is adamantly opposed to the engagement and and favors her education over family. After a disastrous first meeting where Dimple throws iced coffee at Rishi, the two creep toward friendship and love. Sounds Now that sounds like a rom-com to me. Yeah, but it sounds like... A rom com with a twist? Yeah. It's it sounds like Indian American rom com or I like, love it. Yeah. I wanna read it. <laughs> Send me a copy. Um next <laughs> up is I Believe in the Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu. Uh releases on May thirtieth, published by Farrar, Strauss and Giro. 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 Desi Lee is an overachieving are you laughing at my French accent? <laughs> No, of course not. Desi Lee is an overachieving Korean-American high school senior who has never had a plan B in her entire life. But when it comes to romance, she's a bumbling disaster. So when the elusive and artistic Luca transfers to her school, Desi takes notes on love from an unlikely source. Korean drama... Oh, that's a bad idea. (laughs) Korean dramas her father has obsessively watched for years. Armed with her K-drama rules for true love, she pursues Luca, and boat rescues, love triangles, and fake car crashes ensue. I've watched a lot of Korean dramas in my lifetime because I am Korean-American. And yeah, that sounds like a really bad idea. It's a really bad idea. Every time I watch a Korean drama, I'm like, that that's not real. It's like, here, this is like the step-by-step guide how to be a total creeper to everybody. I'm sure it's... It's pretty hilarious, the book. <laughs> no, it, sound, it sounds great. If that sounds, sounds like a... If they made that into a movie, I would I probably I can see it as that. a movie. Or like a TV series. And the last book on our new releases list is Sad Girls by Lang Liev. And it releases on May 30th. And it's published by Andrews McMeal Publishing. And the summary goes, School is almost out for Audrey, but the panic attacks are just beginning. Because Audrey told a lie, and now her classmate Anna is dead. Just as her world begins to spin out of control, Audrey meets the enigmatic Rad, the boy who could turn it all around. But will their ill-timed romance drive her closer to the edge? So stay tuned until after. Yeah, we talk with Langlia later this episode um, about this book. Uh, So yeah, stay tuned after the book deals and news segment. Um, But yeah, this. What do you say we get to some book book news? Book news time. Book deals and news. <laughs> we need a jingle in here. If someone can make one for me, because I, I don't know how to do that. But uh, yeah, let's start with Hooten Mifflin Harcourt bought the rights to Aaron Sumrall's new YA fantasy, Once a King, set in the world of Sumrall's Clash of Kingdoms series. The novel tells the story of 17-year-old Lyra, who was forced on the run with King Adrin after the murder of a high official and must find the true murderer to avert a war among the four kingdoms. The book is slated for a fall 2018 release. 
I think you're going to have to explain to me why. Who's Aaron Summerall? Aaron Summerall is uh, like, oh, God. Okay, I'm trying to remember the actual title of her book because, like, because the Clash of Kingdom series, like, it's the name of the series, but it's like not the name of the first book. Oh. So, but she's been on previous episodes before when we talk about new releases. So, cool. Yeah, she is not. And that's not the mobile game, right? <laughs> no, no, okay. definitely not the mobile <laughs> game. Oh wow! I told like I told like I blanked for a second. And I was like, "What are you talking about?" And I was like, "Oh wait, yeah." Puma bought all the Super Bowl ads. Uh, author Linda Sue Park sold a picture book to Clarion Books in a two-book deal. The picture book is based on Park's best-selling middle-grade novel, A Long Walk to Water, which follows two Sudanese children whose lives are brutally disrupted by political turmoil and civil war. The book is scheduled for fall 2019. That's pretty heavy for a um, middle-grade novel, huh? Guess kids gotta learn. Life is tough. Life is tough. Life is ugly. Ken Jong is the newest addition to the star-studded cast of Crazy Rich Asians. News of his casting came just a day after ABC canceled aw, his sitcom Dr. Ken. But yeah, the Crazy Rich Asians cast is pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, do you have any idea who he might be playing? Because I don't remember any, like, unless he's playing um, mm. someone who's like Chinese or Singaporean, I guess. Are there any Korean characters or no? It's like all old people. It's characters? like all like Singaporean and Chinese and Malaysian. Yeah, will be interesting. He'll probably play like one of the, maybe one of the parents or the yeah, probably friends. one of the one of the parents. Yeah, or maybe just like a crazy party guest. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> In other news, Asian Lit Bingo is currently being held until the end of the month. Originally created by book blogger Shen Wei of Reading As I Am, this reading challenge takes the form of a bingo board with a 5x5 grid and a total of 25 prompts for books to read. All books must feature an Asian main character and be read during the span between May 1st and May 31st to qualify. Oh, okay. I thought we were going to use books we already read to like cover it. No, that's Darn. cheating. That's cheating hardcore. I was going to say, because I was going to ask, because um, Monstrous, is Micah considered Asian American or Asian? No. No. Because, you know, she... This, this bingo board is pretty specific. I mean, you can't say that she doesn't have Asian features. That's true, but it's it, she's not she's not really Asian. I needed I need an Asian... Amer- I need, an, I am, I need I am, an Asian main character with a disability, and she had one arm. I am sure... Yeah, I'm sure it'll work. Um, then I get bingo. Yeah. Actually, no, I can't uh, because you- <laughs> I have to read it during this month. Yeah, there's there's a lot of people who some, like who have been sharing their progress on Twitter. And uh, yeah, a lot of people have read a lot of books this month nice. to complete that board. Well, I mean, you can read like novellas maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. novellas count. Um, but yeah, you can share your progress. Your progress. You can share your progress on Twitter by using the hashtag, hashtag AsianLitBingo. And aside from the bingo challenge, there's going to be planned author interviews, discussions, and social media events to help celebrate APAM. And to learn more about Asian Lit Bingo, you can visit readingasiam.wordpress.com. Um, yeah, like Zen Cho, the author of Sorcerer to a Crown, uh, she was actually one of the authors who were interviewed uh, nice. for, for, for this social media thing. So, yeah. Great. Follow the hashtag. <laughs> um, our next story is, uh, well, it's related to the Potluck Podcast Collective that the uh, Books and Boba Podcast is a part of. Um, Jeff Yang and Phil Yu had a conversation with comic book creators Jing Luan Yang and Greg Pak on their podcast, They Call Us Bruce. Check it out at podcastpotluck.com. Um, a fellow member of the Potluck Podcast Collective. Um, the group talked about diversity in comics, new takes on iconic characters, and debated who would win a fight between Asian Hulk and Asian Superman. Since um, Greg Pak is the writer behind Asian Hulk, um, Amadeus Cho, and uh, Jean Luen Yang is um, the writer behind Asian Superman, or Chinese Superman, um, Ken something, something, Ken, Ken, Z, Ken, Ken, Ken something Kong. I don't. Ken, Ken and Kong. Ken and Kong, yeah. Ken and Kong. I actually like. I actually listened to that episode uh, of uh, "They Call Us Bruce," and I was like, "No, they beat us to a punch. No, they stole our guests, <laughs> <laughs> our future guests." It's all right. Oh. We can get them back. Um, for those those of you who haven't checked it out, um, they're great comics. Especially, I kind of like 
not to not to not to say Asian Superman isn't great, but Asian Hulk is an actual Asian American character, and they do some cool stuff in the comics, including like getting all the Asian American superheroes together to go eat Korean barbecue and sing karaoke. It's really awesome. And you check it out. Um, you can find the episode at podcastpotluck.com um, under the They Call Us Bruce section. Uh, next in our news is BookCon. BookCon will be held from June 3rd to the 4th at the Javits Center in New York City. Hundreds of authors, publishers, literary agents, and YouTube celebra- celebrities will be holding panels, book giveaways, and meet and greets. Uh, some of the Asian authors who will be attending the convention are Renee Adier. T. Bui, Kendara Blake, Melissa De La Cruz, Marjorie Liu, Jenny Han, and Marie Liu. And of course, there are more authors. Yeah. Uh, tickets those, are the, are, those are the ones that matter the most. <laughs> tickets are now on sale at, at the website, which is thebookcon.com. Great. One of these days, I'm going to go to one of these book cons because I had a chance. Well, I would have gone to Y'all West, even though like I'm not the biggest fan of YA fiction. But don't say uh, that. Was during, Cover your years. It was during the film festival, which I had to help work at. But you have a chance this weekend because there is a, a book convention that is local to us. Oh, Lit Fest, Pasadena. That sounds like it could be a, like one of those ratchet EDM parties because it's lit. I'm sure. I'm sure it, it, it will be lit. Lit, lit Fest. <laughs> Lit Fest Pasadena is happening this weekend from May 20th to the 21st. The festival is held at Roman's Bookstore and other venues in the Playhouse District in Pasadena, California. Panel recommendations um, picked by our Rira Yu include Sunshine Noir, the panel featuring a throng of L.A. mystery writers, including Steph Cha and Naomi Hirahara. Cute Filipinos on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, Filipino writers reflect on writing about the second largest Asian American group in the U.S., And Refugee America features novelists whose works explore the refugee experiences of displaced Sri Lankans, Guatemalans, and Iranian Americans. Uh, For the full festival schedule, go to litfestpasadena.org. Might want to check that out, actually. Come with me. You can go say hi to the authors as well. They're doing book signings after the panel. Awesome. Yeah, I stopped by the um, Festival Books, the LA Times Festival Books, but like I didn't really know what I was looking for, so I just like walked around. Usually at book conventions, I, I go to every single booth, regardless of whether I know that publisher or not. Because I'm <laughs> like, oh, free books. Give them to me. That's true. I didn't, pick enough, I didn't pick up enough free books during the festival. Oh, well. Fail. You'll have a chance. <laughs> and that's the news for the month of May. Um, I think next month we're going to try to spread out the mid-month content a little bit more um so that we don't give you everything in one dump um we try to do maybe um new releases in the beginning of the month and then mix between news and interviews um, throughout the other weeks yeah. um but we're still experimenting with our format so um if you have any feedback please sound off um on the goodreads forums we do have a books and bubble goodreads group where we um can discuss books and other news um just go search books and bubble on goodreads.com and now here's our interview with author Lang Liav. She is an international best-selling author and social media sensation. Her poetry collections have garnered critical acclaim around the globe, and her book Lullabies won the 2014 Goodreads Choice Awards for Best Poetry. She's the author of the novel Sad Girls, which releases on May 30th. Hi, Lang. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, we had a really great chat with her about her book and a lot more. So um, without further ado, here is our conversation with Lang Liaf. And we're here with Lang Liaf, the um, author of the upcoming novel, Sad Girls. Um, welcome to Books and Boba. Uh, thanks for uh, chatting with us. I know you're all the way across the, uh, the ocean right now. <laughs> thanks for having me. I guess... Um, for our listeners who haven't heard about your book or um, about you yet, um, can you uh, introduce yourself and, and, and your your coming book? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I'll do my best. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a poet and um, a novelist. Um, I'm the author of uh, four poetry titles, um, and uh, they're, in, they're all international best-selling books, and uh, Sad Girls is my first novel and something I'm very excited about. 
Um, yeah, I suppose that's it. <laughs> um, the book is coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm sure you're really busy with a lot of um, doing a lot of press and um, these interviews. Um, how does it feel down that now that the book's almost out? Um, I think because I started working on it such a long time ago. I mean, I, I was working on it in between, um, you know, my, my poetry titles. So I suppose it always felt like a um, like so, sort of like a pipe dream for me because I worked on it for so many years, uh, and now that it's finally going out, um, well, it, I suppose it's surreal. It's the only way I can think of to describe it. It's just um, a really strange feeling, and there's, there's a lot of you know butterflies and um, <laughs> excitement leading up to it. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with, with um, the book, and uh, I'm. I'm sure my readers are going to love it. So it, it's more just a, you know, it, it's almost like Christmas. It's just really exciting just to finally get it out there and all these characters that have been um, just in my head, they're now going out to the world and um, meeting all my readers. Um, I, I did want to ask, um, because you're so well known for your poetry, um, was it difficult switching from poetry to, I guess, uh, writing uh not prose, but like write, writing fiction? Um, well, it felt quite natural to me. Uh, I mean, I would say writing a novel is, you know, a million times more challenging than writing a piece of poetry. But, I, yeah, it, it felt like quite a, a natural progression. I suppose I've always loved storytelling. I've always written short stories. And um, uh, my books are a combination of, uh, you know, poetry and prose, and um, yeah, I suppose I suppose it was a, a natural thing. Um, and I was very lucky that um, I had the guidance and help from my agent, Al Zuckerman, and he, he was um, a professor at Yale, so he was fantastic in in that. Um, you know, I remember sending him my first manuscript and getting the feedback from that, and then getting to work on it again, um, it, it, it's been a tremendous help. So I suppose the whole process of it has just been um, wonderful. I've absolutely enjoyed every minute of writing Sad Girls. So not only are you a writer, but I heard that you're also an artist. You did all the illustrations for uh, your poetry collections, and I also heard that you design clothes. So uh, is writing has writing always been um, like an art form that, um, that you've always been passionate about or is this something that uh, kind of branched off from uh, your visual arts background? Uh, writing has always been my absolute first love. Um, I've always written from when I was a little girl. I've always written stories and poetry. Um, I suppose, you know, with every creative endeavour I, I went down, um, everything started with a blank piece of paper and a pen uh, or my my fashion label, it was it was story based. It was I had the story of a character named Akina, and you know she would attack teddy bears to steal their button eyes. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, but that was that was a theme running running through my my fashion label, um, and I think you know it was a storytelling element that you know got it that I I felt was responsible for for its success, um, and then. I just, um, you know, progress to, to art and there's a lot of storytelling in my paintings as well. I mean, there's little details that I, that I interweave into, into the actual, um, you know, visual pieces, uh, um, that tell, tell a story. So I suppose storytelling has always been something, um, that I've loved and I'm just so lucky that now I get to do it full time. So, in terms of your your um, your upbringing in in New Zealand, and I understand your family comes from Cambodia. Yeah, um, my family. Uh, I was born in a um, refugee camp, uh, in a Thai refugee camp, when my parents were fleeing the Khmer Rouge regime. Mm. Uh, so we emigrated to Australia when I was a baby, and um, I grew up in a. Um, in a small town, it was a low socioeconomic town, um, and named Cabramatta and um it was it was quite a, a multicultural um it was a melting pot of of migrants so it, it was quite multicultural and I'm really glad that I had that upbringing because um a lot of my friends were from you know different backgrounds and but 
but we were all just, um, you know, we were just girls growing up. We talked about the same things. Um, we liked the same things. We read the same books. So I'm, I'm really grateful that I've, that I've had that upbringing. And so um, how much of that do you bring into your, your, your work as, as a poet, a storyteller, you know, multi, can we call you like a polymath? Is that the correct term? <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, um, I suppose. Um, I think uh, Sad Girls does have quite a diverse cast. I don't want to give too much away because mm. um, it, it's one of those books where you should avoid spoilers because I do have a lot of surprises <laughs> in there. Um, yeah, I heard that it has a lot of twists. Yeah, which is why, um, you know, I, I mean, I had such a tough time just writing the blurb because I thought, look, um, I've got to write it in such a way that, you know, it doesn't actually give too much of the story away. Um, so there, there is a diverse cast in um, Sad Girls, um, which is cool. And it's my first book, so, you know, hopefully I can, I can you know, write many more and go into other, you know, different perspectives and, um, you know, have, have that kind of representation. Yeah. And um, I, a story that I've always wanted to write was my mother's story because she was, um, you know, in, in the midst of – she was about – the age I am now when, um, you know, the Khmer Rouge regime came in and um, she, she has such an incredible story. It, it's a, a story of survival. Um, and there were just horrors that I, I can't even imagine. I mean, she was telling me this story about, you know, they were on the run through the, through the jungle and she was just so exhausted. And she, mem- she remembers lying down and just, falling asleep and there, there was something like her head was resting on something just really soft and warm and really comforting and she just she just fell asleep and then she woke up the next morning and she'd been sleeping in cow dung oh. so oh, there, there are just lots of little stories um you know with my family with a lot of um, migrants who in, in the area where I grew up in who have the most incredible you know heart-wrenching stories so I've, I've always wanted to write my mother's story but I, I think it'll be a few a few books or I'm a few books away from that but um that's something I think that will be very close to my heart yeah can I know there's a lot a um, lot more stories now coming from that time from that you know that time frame from the refugee and from the you know not from the soldier's perspective but from the ordinary people that lived through it and had to survive through it and and I guess your mom would have been pregnant with you while she was escaping too, right? Um, yeah, she didn't know it at the time, but yeah, she was. <laughs> wow. I yeah. like, definitely write it in the future because I will <laughs> I will read it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, yeah, it's it's something that I definitely will do mm. at some stage. Great. Um, so in addition to um, May being Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, um, it's also Mental Health Awareness Month. And, you know, your, your book, um, just from the, the description, deals a lot with, um, with mental health issues, with depression, with um, anxiety uh, and yes. things like that. Um, is that something that you um, – was that something you've always wanted to write about and put into, put into words? Um, I suppose the character of Audrey, she came to me um, – uh, almost fully formed. I mean, I remember the moment when her voice just burst into my head and she began telling me this amazing story and, um, you know, I just um, I just put it put it down on paper. So it it almost felt like, I mean, it was quite magical, the, the experience of writing Sad Girls. It almost felt like I was transcribing someone else's story. Um, you know, and the theme of anxiety is in the book, but, you know, it, it's a love story. And it's, um, you know, this girl who, who's struggling. And like I said, I don't want to give too much away, um, but she's struggling with anxiety. Um, and anxiety is something personally that, you know, I'm familiar with. Um, so I, I felt that it was just a natural part of her character. Um, and uh, I didn't set out to make it a book about anxiety, if that makes sense. But it, it's just part of who she is. Yeah, from... Um from the reviews that I've read of, of sad girls, a lot of people yeah. praised you for um, making anxiety not not really a negative thing. Like, it's something that is a part of the character and um, it's something that the character shouldn't be ashamed of. No, and it, it's such a common thing as well. Um, you know, I, I know lots of people have suffered from anxiety and it, it's it's... Like I said, it's very common, and um, no, you shouldn't be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, so um, I'm really glad that that came across um, in the book. 
I was looking at the Goodreads, and a lot of people got the advanced copies. Um, are really really excited about it, and excited for other people to read it. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. pretty excited to read it because um, personally, I have uh, anxiety issues, and I have um, and have clinical yeah. depression. So, I'm definitely yeah. curious as to uh, how you portray those two mental uh, health issues uh, mm-hmm. in your in your yeah. writing. Um, I tried to do it in a way that was authentic and. Um, yeah, um, you know, and also relating it to my experience of anxiety and, um, you know, people that I've been close to have had anxiety. So, yeah, I really hope you do enjoy the book. Um, the book is out May 30th um, on Amazon, Kindle, and bookstores everywhere. Uh, what's um, what's next for you? Um, are you already hard at work at your next book or are you going to take a break for a while? I've already um, writing the next book, which is going to be another poetry and prose compilation. So that should come out sometime early next year. And um, right now I'm, I'm thinking of, um, you know, ideas for my next novel. I'm just, um, I suppose I'm, I'm just waiting for, you know, a, a voice to come along and grab me, like in the same way that Audrey's voice did. And, you know, when that happens, then I, I think I, I would just, know instinctively um you know just to to follow the you know that rabbit hole i suppose yeah <laughs> and, and see where it leads me um but i'm not going to put too much pressure on myself um in regards to the novel because sad girls did take me quite <laughs> a while to write um and i i like the idea that i was able to spend as much time as i wanted um because i think there is this sort of you know, incubation period, um, you know, for authors that it, it's like a, a real luxury to have that. And um, that's something that I'm really looking forward to to doing all over again. Awesome. We really have anything else to... I, I do have a question, but it's like <laughs> more of... Um, I'll just ask it. Yeah, okay. Um, so your poetry is extremely popular on social media. It uh, okay. It seems like when I go on Tumblr, uh, I see I see like excerpts from your uh, poetry collections pretty often. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I know that your your poetry gained kind of a cult following after you published uh, "Love and Misadventure" back in 2013. So yes. I so my question is: Did you expect that? Did you expect uh, your writing to have kind of have this response online? Um, I, I think you you just um, you know like with every creative endeavor I've um, you know I've tried. Uh, I suppose all you you can do is just put your work out there and you know hope for the best. Cross your fingers. So um, yeah, I suppose thinking back, it was it was such an exciting time. I mean, it was just um, it just suddenly um, you know grew very very quickly. Um, and yeah, it was an incredibly exciting time. So no, I didn't expect the success, but I'm extremely grateful. And it's, it's allowed me now to write full time, which is, you know, my passion and always has been. So yeah, it's actually quite wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, your voice touched, uh, something with, uh, with the public mm. and, you know, people like, um, Seeing things, seeing things through your words, I guess. Yeah, well, I suppose poetry is um, it's quite subjective. So, uh, a piece, a, a poem, or a piece of prose will resonate with you at different times in your life. Um, I suppose it's almost like a mirror. Um, so, I, I suppose with poetry, um, you know, the reader be- becomes a protagonist in a way, which mm-hmm. is kind, of, which is really cool. Well. Uh... Yeah, thanks again for um, talking with us. Do you have anything else you wanted to ask? Or I'm very excited to read Sad Girls, and um, I definitely want to read some of your other poetry, um, like some of your other poetry collections. So I will definitely add those to my read That's, yeah. reading pile. <laughs> my very, very tall reading I feel pile. like it's ever growing to be yeah. honest. I know I know the feeling I've, I've got one of my own I mean I think every reader does yeah. slowly, it's like slowly next, just one book at a time it's yes. like my Netflix queue just never ne- like I watch one thing and I add 10 things later on yeah I know absolutely <laughs> it, yeah but you know I'll, I'll get through them one day yeah <laughs> eventually um, yeah. 
the book again is Sad Girls. It comes out May 30th. Um, we were talking with the author, Lang Liav. Um, thanks so much for chatting with us and um, for sharing your, your, <laughs> your stories and your, your thoughts. Um, Where can our listeners find you? Um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and um, I'm quite active on Twitter. So Twitter's probably the best one to get me on. Great. Um, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks again. Um, and um, we'll, we'll catch up with you later, I think. We'll yeah, absolutely. It was yeah. lovely to talk to you both. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. And that was our interview with Lang Liav. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we had a lot of fun talking with her. Um, and it's always cool to talk to people from across the ocean. It's like, yeah, it's interesting to meet Asians who are not like asian americans or just like residing in asia yeah it's like you guys exist <laughs> i mean we've we've read a couple books by well we read um source of the crown yeah, by Zen Cho, who's a new zealander from and which he as yeah. well he's a uh, yeah you know, it's always just great to um to read di- read from diverse voices you know um broadening your horizons on that note i guess that'll do it for this episode of books and boba thanks again for listening um, again, don't forget this month's book club pick is The Sympathizer by Viet Thanh Nguyen. Um, we'll be discussing that episode in full with a special guest, Chris Din. Um, oh my God, the secret is out. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the end of the month. So make sure you, uh, you read the book. And, um, if you've already read the book and have your thoughts, feel free to let us know about it on our Goodreads forums. Again, you can find it by searching Books and Boba on Goodreads.com and joining our group. Um, for those of you in the Los Angeles area, you can join us for a live book club discussion on June 3rd, which is a Saturday, um, at the Oh My Pan Bakery in Pasadena. And for those of you who aren't in the Los Angeles area, feel free to join us for the virtual book club meeting uh, taking place on June 4th um, over Google Hangout. Um, information can be found on our Facebook page, so please check that out. Yeah, and yeah, we're going to call that a show, so get started on the sympathizer if you haven't started already <laughs> it's it's a lot longer than the last book so i highly recommend you start now thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on books and boba this episode of books and boba was hosted by marvin Yue and rira Yu, and produced and edited by marvin Yue. For further discussion on the books covered at Books and Boba, please visit our Goodreads forum. You can find the link on our Facebook page at Books and Boba, as well as by searching for the group Books and Boba on Goodreads.com. Books and Boba is also a proud member of the Potluck Podcast Collective, a brand new collective of Asian American podcasts and podcasters. You can learn more about the collective as well as check out our founding slate of programs by visiting the website www.podcastpotluck.com. It's Marvin. If you enjoy this podcast, then you'll also like They Call Us Bruce, another great show from the Potluck Podcast Network. Here's a short excerpt of their episode last week where they talked to comic book creators Gene Luen Yang and Greg Pak. Who would win in a fight? Asian Hulk or Asian Superman? <laughs> like right now? Like right now? <laughs> right now. Uh, let's start with Greg. Make your case. Make your case, man. Well, it depends on what stage Asian Superman is in his emotional development, right? Um, no, I'm serious because, uh, like, when I've been given this question before, you know, it's usually with Clark Kent, right? And my my answer, my honest answer, is that if it's just, you know, if if they're just, if all they're doing is just fighting, um, Hulk will win because the Hulk is the strongest one there is. The angrier he gets. You know, like no matter how strong Superman is, Hulk can, you know, he he can get stronger uh, if you make him mad enough. Ah, but if we're not talking about Clark and Bruce, but Amadeus and Cannon. <laughs> right. <laughs> then, like I say, then it depends on what stage in his emotional development Cannon is. So, if it's Cannon, gonna be, it's gonna, so Amadeus gets stronger when he gets angry, right? Uh, yes, although, but the interesting thing, but Amadeus has not yet uh, demonstrated that he's got the depths of anger that Bruce has, so we don't know how strong he can get. I mean, he, he says he's the strongest one there is, because 
he's Amadeus. Of course he's going to say that. <laughs> um, and according to the rules, he could be. But how angry can Amadeus get? You know, what will put Amadeus over the top, you know? Well, that 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 ans- I feel like that answers the question. Amadeus would clearly win because Ken is a dick. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, would make, you would make Amadeus so mad. Check out the Collis Bruce and the other great shows of the Potluck Podcast Collective by going to www.podcastpotluck.com.